question come in, and it was this. Should we not recognize Mass in all languages as the official prayer of the Church? And I think that was getting at some of the comments I made about the use of the Latin language and how that is the official language of the Church. But it's important to note, the Church is not afraid of language. And in fact, the Church uses languages, including non-verbal languages, to proclaim the Gospel, the good news of salvation in Christ to all of us. That's the first point. The second point is that the Catholic Church is not monolithic. It's not just one big entity that's based in Rome. The Catholic Church is actually 23 different ritual churches that are in communion with one another, of which the largest, by a great extent, is the so-called Latin Church, the church that we are a part of, the church that this diocese is a part of. That accounts for perhaps 96% of Catholics worldwide. But in the other 22 different ritual churches, they of course have different traditions and especially different languages. We can see that even in our own neighborhood. If we were to drag up the road to St. Anne's Church in Danbury, we find a Melkite Catholic Church. And the Melkites, of course, worship, or principally their language is Greek, but they also worship in Arabic and English. Or if we go down to Stanford, we'll find the Ukrainians. And their liturgical language is Greek, Church Slavonic, and they also worship in Ukrainian. So I think we have to make a distinction between an official language and an authorized language. And of course, wherever the church authorizes a language to be used, that necessarily is the official prayer of the church. God speaks all languages, and when we pray to God, we pray in our own language and he understands us. But nevertheless, this idea of authority is important because we have to be able to come down to one particular text and understand quite what we're saying about our Lord Jesus Christ if we're to believe the same things as one another. So having an authoritative language, like Latin, helps us to preserve our communion one with another. It doesn't mean that the way that we pray has to be identical. So I think that's an important thing to remember, that wherever the church authorizes a language to be used, that is the official prayer of the church. It's also interesting to note that actually, the use of Latin and other languages, even in our own Western Roman Latin church has changed over the years. So in 1615, the Pope for the first time authorized a translation of the Missal into Chinese. And in 1624, he authorized the translation of the Roman Missal into Slavonic for use in Croatia. Later on, and closer to home, he authorized the translation of the Roman Missal into Algonquin and Iroquois and Mohawk languages for use in the Native American communities. So it's not like the church can never respond to different pastoral needs. But in our tradition, there's always a tension between intelligibility and communion. So we like to keep both of those things. We want intelligibility. We want people to know our faith. But we also want things that bring us to communion. So that whether you're in Baltimore or Beijing, you're worshiping the same God in the same way.